This time on Crackpot, I speak to Alicia Ayres, a Polish actress based in Dublin. We're going to talk about a load of things, including life as an actress, the film she's involved in, and starting again in a foreign country. Enjoy. What got you interested in acting? Oh, God. I don't remember even, because I think as long as I remember, I just liked doing stuff like that. I mean, I was talking to my uh, parents even and they were telling me stories of me just making up all worlds around me and just acting different characters or making impressions of my mom or my aunt or, you know. <laughs> so yeah. I think it was just something that I had in me. Just, I guess, experiencing other lives. That's the main thing that just really got me into that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what do you prefer, uh, stage or camera? Well, they are very different, and I think um, I like them for different reasons. Like the stage, I love because it's it's very alive, and the whole process is very um, ordered and organic. Like the rehearsals, and then when you do the play, you do the whole thing from the beginning to the end. So it's very. Uh, it's a whole thing, you know. You just you have the whole journey uh, with the character as as it is, like in a chronological order, yeah. if you want to call it that way. Uh, so it's a very organic experience, and it's um, and also the you know the contact with the audience. It's very alive. It's it's very there in the moment. So it gives you a great um, I don't know. It's a great energy, great vibe. Mm. And it just happens there. But at the same time, uh, when it's done, it's done, you know? You can't really um, send it anywhere. Yeah. Like, if someone missed it, they missed it. And so it's 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 a shame just, you know, to spend so much time with something and then it's gone. Yeah. So uh, with film, you can at least, you know, it stays and you can go back to it. You can send it to people. Even if someone is not here, you can, you know, they can see it because it's, like something stays with you, so, um, so you you have at least some kind of some, I don't know something that stays you can show to people some portfolio or something. Yeah, so. But you know, working on the film is very different because it's very um, I don't know. It's very um, like you have to wait a lot, and then there is like two minutes they they need you for, and you have to do some very emotional things. And, yeah, you know, you just need to be ready to do that for those five minutes, and then. You know they need to prepare another set, and you wait for another three hours or something. So it's very um, all over the place. It's a very different different experience. But I I kind of love both of them. It's just they're very very different oh. things. And uh, well, you know, film it it does take a lot more time because you're getting those things done that one time. If you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Do you guys? Yeah. I mean, you, you're about to spend a lot of time on set then. Do you guys have a lot of fun on sets, or what's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on a project like that? Um, on a film set, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the film set can be very boring. Oh, really? <laughs> for oh, me, well. because, <laughs> yeah, because especially for the actors, because I think most work is done by tech people, you know, the crew, yeah. because they have they have everything everything to work on you know the equipment and so they are just working constantly and sometimes I'm actually jealous of them because they actually do work you know <laughs> and you as an actor just sit there and wait and they just put you in a costume and put a makeup on you and then and then you just wait for your scene to be ready and then you have like a few minutes to do it and then that's it, <laughs> is, it um, is it hard to just switch on the feelings yeah sometimes you know it's it just it's a very it can be a challenge, so you, you need to. Sometimes you need to just stay away from people if you need to get into something very, you know, um, like it's a very emotional and important thing that probably you need some time before to just get into that space because otherwise people will be chatting to you and joking, and you know, it's not it's not a good vibe to have <laughs> when you have to be like tragically <laughs> going through something. But. Um, <clears throat> I loved working on the canal, for example, because there was a lot of special effects that guys had to do on me, the special effect guys, yeah. Bowsy Workshop. They're amazing. They're like super talented artists. And I spent lots of time with them, most of the time, basically, because they were preparing me for the scenes. 
um, and it was crazy. It was it was amazing. Yeah, like that was you know that was the most crazy thing I did I think when I was shooting canal because the one thing when we were shooting in the in the canal actually in the canal and they had to put me under the water and get me out but I was wrapped in sheets and so I, I had a little panic attack because <laughs> it was just like surreal. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the most crazy thing. I would never ever do that in another, you know. In another project. <laughs> but the yeah, yeah. It's, but the canal, it's it's a horror film in it, and is it still scary yeah. when you watch it back? I mean, you're working with all these people, and you spend an hour and a half watching you all, you know, die or whatever. <laughs> I can never really figure yeah. that whole thing out from your end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it is. You what? I mean, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen the whole film yet. I've seen the clip, yeah. <laughs> and I really love the the vibe. and And I think I I could be probably scared because I I only did a few scenes in it. I haven't seen the rest of it, obviously. Uh, but at the same time, you know those people, and you remember how it was, you know, how we were working on it. Yeah. But then the magic happens, and on the screen, it it just looks so real that you can still, you know, get scared or be completely overwhelmed by what's happening even though you know it's you know it's made up and you remember guys talking about it how they are going to work on it and stuff <laughs> um but yeah i still haven't seen it <laughs> i'm still bringing myself to see it because <laughs> i've heard reviews that it's really scary and disturbing and i'm like okay i'll i'll just wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's, I suppose that's the good thing about film. Like, even if you are in it and you know that you know if nothing happens to all these people, you know it's still there. Mm -hmm. Um, and another film, another film you were involved in was I used to live here. That's kind of got a lot of taboo sort of themes in it. Does that take a mental toll on you as an actress? Do I mean, do you take those feelings home with you when you're engrossing yourself in a role like that? If you know what I mean. Um. Well, I probably was thinking more about those subjects because um like my character wasn't um it's it's a supporting character so it wasn't in the middle of the whole you know drama yeah, yeah. but the whole project was um a very focused you know and we were talking a lot about that about mental issues and about suicide and suicide clusters and uh frank the director he was so passionate about everything <clears throat> and you could see that his heart was in it and he really really wanted to tell that story and um it was amazing to work with him and i, I don't i wouldn't call it as you know um, emotional tool or something but you know i was probably thinking about it much more yeah. and um and reading about those things and and probably you know just when i heard something i would my attention would go there because i was just working on this project you'd, um you'd be more so aware. but but it was actually you know working on that film was um it was a very very good vibe and positive vibe and very everyone was really really committed and uh was was really beautiful energy on set and do you think it's easier well i mean frank berry wrote and directed it so do you think it was mm. it was easier to work under him or do you think it came together better because he did both of those things as opposed to having a separate writer and director? I think so, you know, I think so, because, um, you know, you write something and you have some vision and then the other person may completely change yeah. it and something you wanted to have there is, is gone. So uh, with him, it was it was a very, again, very organic process of just uh, changing things as well because he wrote it, he knew what was important and what he could left, leave out um, and sometimes he would even let <clears throat> the actors, especially the young actors to come up with some other lines because you know, like teenagers would have their own things they talk about that he wouldn't know about so I think they had a few uh, scenes where you know, the, the young actors were improvising mm. or they were saying that we would talk about this because this is on top now or something and he was like, okay let's, let's leave it in, you know yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, I think he was, he, he kept changing his scripts as well as they were shooting. Um, and also, it was a very interesting approach because I never actually read the whole script. We were just, I was only given scenes that I was supposed to shoot. So I never actually saw the whole script till I saw the film. I, I, I didn't know the story. So I think he did that with everyone. He just gave them the, the scene that they were supposed to work on. 
and they were supposed to focus on that scene and that's it, you know, without the, the big contest, the context. I think, I think that worked really well because then you just, uh, you're in the moment mm. and you don't think about the you know journey you don't preempt things you're just there and that's what matters yeah so uh, yeah it was a great great um, way of making the whole thing come together it's definitely a fairly unique technique there uh, talking about that film I mean that's got to be fairly low budget would it have been oh yeah yeah, yeah so um, and of course you know it's it was basically shot in um Tala yeah. with people from Tala that community and they had other things to do like work and school and <laughs> everything so uh, we were shooting mostly in the weekends uh, so it was a very long process Okay. and and yeah Frank I think he had uh, problems getting funding uh, mostly because of the theme of the subject I think people were scared that it's too, yeah. too far out you know too dangerous or something so um, so yeah, it was mostly I think funded by him, like by himself, with, with with some help. But mostly I think that was him. It took a lot of bravery and effort for that. But oh yeah. <laughs> but talking about uh, a completely different subject or film, I suppose, Mond. What can you tell me about Mond? Um, well, Mond is um, it's a script which was adapted from a theatre play. Um, written by Gary Dugan and it's a basically um, you know a very lad film <laughs> I mean it's about okay. three three guys who um, uh, who have a crazy weekend of drugs and parties and um, there is some gangster in the background um, and it's a very very you know it's set in Dublin and it's a very lad film from, from okay. what I read and <laughs> um it's a, it's a kind of a, yeah, it's a comedy, a bit of drama, a bit of action, but basically, you know, it's a, a party, drugs, and... Um, hmm. and it's sort of, like, sort of like The Hangover, but a lot darker, I would imagine. Kind of, I'd say. Probably something like that, yeah, because they, they have this big thing um, that they have to get rid of this huge amount of drugs over the weekend, but at the same time... Each of the guys deals with some, you know, issues in their own lives, like personal okay. life, and um, yeah, I think I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, and what sort of role did you have on in the in the film? Um, oh, it's a kind of a silly role because it's, <laughs> it's basically <laughs> a love interest, you know. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was I mostly, won't ask anymore. It's fine. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> but um, it was. Just you know, uh, shooting mostly in a, in a club, so it's just silly, and you're kind of or drunk, or you know, so it's very silly and okay. very just you know love interest. So that's mainly <laughs> that's mainly it. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm, yeah, <laughs> it was fun. It was it was fun. A few few days of shooting, you know, <laughs> and also the guy were the guys were, I think, improvising a lot again. You know, there was a. Of course, there was a script, but then they always had some extra ideas of what to make it more funny or something. So, uh, so it was a lot of lot of fun, and you know. <laughs> mm, yeah, I mean, situations like that, I could imagine, would be unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, but not no major drama for me, or you know, no major challenging emotions okay. or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just showed off major money. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hard to make money actually when you're when you're an actress in Oh Dublin? God, yeah, yeah. Most projects are just um, you know ve like very very low budget. Like actors are usually on the very bottom, I think. When mm. you know when it comes <laughs> to pay. Um, yeah. So no, it's in general acting business is really tough because um, to make a film is. It, that takes a lot of money. So, so to yeah. pay every single person that works on it, plus pay for the equipment and the venues and you know um, insurance, everything. Um, it's really, really expensive to make a film. So then, um, you know, you end up doing films just for nothing or for really, really like minimum um, symbolical fee or something. Mm. Uh, or sometimes it's it's some kind of a profit share thing, you know, that you sign a contract and when the film makes money, then you're entitled to some percent of uh, what it makes. 
But yeah, but mostly it's really, really difficult. Unless you're a big name that you can start asking yeah. for proper, you know, proper parts in the proper productions <laughs> for proper money. It's just that's, like that, you would starve if you didn't have other things. <laughs> yeah, that's the other side of the coin. I mean, you have yeah. that higher potential that you could reach than, mm. I mean, but then again, a very, very few people reach that. Yeah, exactly. You know, most people, I think, um, are in that huge pond of just everyone trying to make it. Uh, and yeah, you, do, you, you need to have some other um, income because, you know, you wouldn't make it <laughs> on asking mm. itself, I'm afraid. <laughs> And I mean, you're you're from Poland, aren't you? Yeah. That's got to be hard starting fresh. Uh, what start? What took you to Ireland in the first place? Well, um, in Poland, I was studying English as um, like everything about English language and history, literature. Uh, so when I fin, I'm basically a certified English teacher. English is a second language. So when I finished, when I graduated, I just thought that it would be great to actually you know, live in an English-speaking country <laughs> just to, you know, yeah, take it to the next level. <laughs> With acting, even, it's the same thing because I was, um, back in Poland, I was involved in a semi-professional, I mean, we were amateur theatre, but everywhere we go, they were telling us we are too professional to be in this competition of amateur theatre or something. So I always think of uh, that group as semi-professional. <laughs> it was very yeah. high level. And um, I was part of this group for a, six or seven years I think and again we were um, doing everything like English and Irish and American plays in original language in English so it was also educational theater uh, people would take you know teachers would take the students uh, to see our plays because we were performing in English so kind of even acting performing in English became more natural for me than performing in Polish <laughs> so okay. um, so yeah when I came here um, I just I just didn't know because I didn't know anyone here in the industry. So you know, I just I was thinking how I can get into the industry, and then I thought I should probably do the the school, you know, the professional training because then you're just mm. thrown in the middle of it. What is well? I'm going to ask a, a kind of a two sided question here. Mm. What's the worst part and the best part of being an actor in Ireland? Um, I I don't know what the best thing is. The best thing is. Probably that a lot of great productions are happening here. Um, not only Irish productions, but productions from you know, um, like the great TV shows that you can get involved in. Um, yeah, like Game of Thrones. For yeah, Game of Thrones, Thrones or the Vikings, um, or even Penny Dreadful. You know, I watch yeah. I watch those, um, especially the Vikings. <laughs> I kind of watch them because I know so many people in. In, in it yeah. like every episode there is someone I know and it's just such a, such a cool <laughs> feeling just to, you know <laughs> takes you out of the whole thing for a moment but at the same time it's really cool so so that's a great thing I think you know that there's a lot of productions here TV shows and films that are big and out there in the world but they use Irish actors so that's a great thing um, mm. The worst thing, I don't know, the worst thing is probably what everyone runs about, that it's just, you know, uh, the, the payment thing, <laughs> that you just Money, end up, yeah, yeah end up um, doing projects for nothing or really just ridiculous money, and you can't really uh, rely on it, you know, as, as a work. It kind of becomes your hobby or something you do, you do on the side, because the money is just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So that's probably so the worst thing. What's your next move? What projects are you looking to work with next? Um, I am working on two theater projects. I mean, working. I'm involved in just developing now. So there's not really much to talk about yet. But um, okay. uh, one is with the Friday Theater Company, which I founded with uh, two friends from the Gaiety School of Acting. Um, okay. And we already did a few plays, and now there's another, there's a big play that we are thinking of putting up, but it's again a lot of work and and fundraising and money, you know, so I don't know when mm -hmm. it will be ready, uh, but that's one of the projects <clears throat> that is kind of out there uh, waiting to, you know, to be tackled, yeah. um, and the play is called Abort. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> and uh, the the other one is with another two friends from the JD School of Acting. We've been just writing scenes and skyping because uh, one of them lives in Kerry now, I think. Yeah, in Kerry, and then oh, okay. uh, the other one is back in the states. So <laughs> it's uh, it's <laughs> even more tricky <laughs> to put it together. Yeah, a little. <laughs> um, but we are we are you know skyping regularly and sending scenes back and forth. And we have a rough idea of what it could be. Um, so again, it could take another year or two, even to you know to make it work. Yeah, I, I mean, it. logistically, that's hard. Yeah, yeah. And also, I have a couple of um, short films ideas because it's so difficult when you're an actor. You're so dependent on other people because mm. you, there's nothing you can do on your own. Really, you just need it for a project or for a character. You know. So um, I have a couple of ideas for short films uh, that I then I could do for myself, you know. So, that I so could you're thinking of moving across to to writing and maybe yeah, more? yeah. I mean, I had a little um, I had a little adventure with the writing a script and making it, mm. but it was um, it was really short and uh, rushed, and um, so it's it's still I count it as just an exercise more than um, anything else um, and also I was I think I was working on the day when they were shooting so I couldn't be even on set someone else was directing it so it was kind of happened outside of me you know for most part and first experience so it was it was great to to do it but now I'd like mm. to uh, be more involved in the whole production process but yeah I know I know a few people that I worked be with before and they've made a couple of shorts so I probably approach I know who I would approach uh, mm. kind of working on slowly at the moment okay cool Alicia thank you very much it's been great talking to you thank you very much that was Alicia Ayres there thanks for visiting Crap Class, and you can find links to all her work on the page below if you liked what you heard feel free to like and share if you have anything to say don't be afraid to comment and if you subscribe you'll be able to follow more from Crackpot.